Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and welcome to the next video in my series of creating a Docker image for AI and machine learning. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of creating your Docker file. We'll create it and we'll get it running. I'm going to start there in this video so that in the next video, you're prepared to build out the entire image yourself. All right, let's get started. When you create your own Docker image, you're actually going to start with an image that already exists. And likely you're going to start with a Docker image that's available at hub.docker.com. So go to that website now. Again, that's hub.docker.com and make sure you're signed in. The next thing that you'll do is go to the Explore tab at the top of the window. When you get there, you're going to find that there are a number of images already available to you. There's thousands of these. And you'll see here that, for example, there's a popular Alpine operating system that's based on Linux. There's NGNIX, there's Ubuntu, the thing we're going to use. There's Python, Redis, Postgres, and so on and so forth. Now, you might be looking at this and go, Bill, look, there's Python right there. Why don't I just use this? Well, there's two reasons. One is that they may or may not always update to the newer version that you might need to use. Now, granted, Python's super popular and it's updated constantly. You can see right here, it's updated eight days ago. So there's a really good chance you will get the latest and greatest version. However, what if you want to focus on a certain operating system or you have a specific chipset? There's all these questions that you need to ask before you start using some pre-built image. What's great about pre-built images at the very least is that you'll be able to get them and start working with them immediately without too much work. So if someone said, hey, Bill, check out the Python programming language, I'd probably download this. But if I'm going to build my own image after that, that has all the tools and technologies I want, I'm probably going to build it from scratch. This is my personal preference. It doesn't have to be yours at all. Now, you can see here, this is the Ubuntu operating system. What you can see down here is that it supports all of the latest chipset architectures, including older ones as well. And this ARM64, that's what I use on my computer. That's the Apple M series chip, Apple Silicon. And most likely, if you do not have an Apple chip, you're probably using an X64 chip that's from Intel. So this is good news. You can actually use this in older computers and newer computers. Now let's take a look at what the image looks like. If I select this, it's going to load some information about this Ubuntu image. Notice, first of all, that it says Docker official image. That's one of the first things you want to look for. If you do not see a Docker official image, then you know that they're not necessarily following all of the best practices that Docker has put into building these things security checks and not installing extra things that aren't needed and things like that. So this is actually a really good start is that you start with a Docker official image. If you don't see that, then locate that one. Now you'll notice here that there are these things called tags. The tags show the version number usually that you're going to use. And this is what you care most about in most situations. So you can see here, it says, 20.04, 22.04, 23.10, and so on and so forth. So these are the latest builds, if you will, of the operating system that you can use. Now, if I scroll back up to the top for a moment here, you'll see that it says Docker pull Ubuntu. So actually, all you need to do in your Docker file is to say, I want Ubuntu. But if you want a specific version, you can identify that version down here with the tags and use that when you create your Docker image. So with all of that, let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's take a quick look at my desktop. On the left, I have Visual Studio Code. And you don't have to do this, but I have the Docker dashboard. And I'm looking at images right now. That's actually going to be our template that we're going to create. And then there's containers. And this will be the Ubuntu operating system where we can actually work with the operating system. The first thing I want to show you here is in Visual Studio Code, if I press Control backtick on my keyboard, you'll notice that it opens up a terminal window. This terminal window, if I zoom in a little bit here just so you can see it, it says 
Bill Raymond at Bill's MacBook Pro. What this means is that if I create a folder or if I install any software, it's all going directly onto my computer. But I don't want to do that. I want to install that onto the Ubuntu operating system. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill this terminal window using a little trash icon here so we can continue. We're going to create a Docker file. So go to the Explorer here. And when you see this open folder option, select that. And then on your desktop or wherever you might want to put this folder, select new folder and type my dash AI dash Docker dash image. Why are we putting dashes here? Well, if we ever decide to use GitHub, it'll actually be easier to work with uh, because the URL won't show up with all these little special characters in it. So. I'm going to go ahead and select the create button, and then I'm going to select the open button. Now, next to the my AI Docker image folder here, there's a new file item. So go ahead and select that and type the word Docker file. This is going to be with a capital D and all the other letters are lowercase with no extension. So just Docker file and press return. Notice that there's a little whale next to the uh, folder here, the file rather, and that's saying that this is a Docker item, a Docker file, and it notices that because we have the Docker extension installed. Now over here on the right, one of the first things that you do with a Docker image or a Docker file rather is define the image you're going to start with. Now remember, we could have started with a Python image, we could have started with Postgres or all sorts of different images, but we're going to start with Ubuntu. So I'll type the word from in capital letters. And then when I do that, I can type the word Ubuntu. And notice that as I'm typing, it's actually getting the list of different options available to me from that Docker hub. Now, there's all these different options here. I'm just going to type Ubuntu. And then colon is those tags that I showed you before, where you can select a specific version of Ubuntu. Now I could just type the word latest, latest like this, and that will just get whatever the latest version of Ubuntu is. But remember, I want to create this training video for you. So if you watch it a year from now, it still works. And I don't know what could happen between now and then. So I'm going to type 22.04. That's the version of Ubuntu that I'm going to work with. You can change that if you see fit. Then I'll just go ahead and press return to create a second line. Then I'm going to save the file with Command S or Control S on your Windows PC. So now that that file is saved, we can actually build our first Docker image on our computer. To do that, we need to open up the command menu, the command palette in Visual Studio Code. So what you do is you type Command Shift P on your keyboard or Control Shift P on Windows, and you'll see all of the menu items available to you in Visual Studio Code. And you can search for something. So I can type dev containers and then I'll type uh, colon rebuild and notice that as I'm typing the menu shorten and here you can see it says rebuild or reopen in container. Make sure you select that one and remember you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to select that one. Go ahead and press return and then it's going to say oh well I can't rebuild because you've never built one before so Tell me how you want me to build it. I'm going to select Docker file. Then it says, are there any features you want to install? And we're not going to do that. So we'll just leave zero selected and select the OK button. This is actually going to go and create this Docker image for us. There's a few things happening. One, you'll notice this .dev container folder got opened. We'll talk about that in a future video. But what's also happening over here on the right-hand side is that you're getting the image from the Docker Hub, that Ubuntu image, and it's creating a brand new image based on our definition, which we haven't really defined much yet, and is putting that on our computer. And you can see it might actually create multiple images. We're not going to get into why that happened in this video. You might have one, you might have multiple. But you'll notice that there's one here that says in use. So that's the one that's being used right now. And if I come over here to the containers area, you can see I have a running container. So remember this image, this one that says in use right now, 
that's the thing that is our template. And this container, that's the thing that we'll actually do work inside of. So what I want to do at this point is take a look at what's going on in Visual Studio Code. First of all, if you look down here at the bottom left of the screen, in my case, it actually says that there is a dev container running. This, this area here is letting me know that you are now in a dev container. And if I select this, you'll actually see some specific menu items show up specific to that container. More on that later. So if I go ahead and do my control backtick to open the terminal window again, Let's take a look at what we see now. I'm just gonna manipulate my window a little bit here and zoom in on that terminal window. <laughs> Sorry about that, I pressed too many keys, but notice it no longer says Bill Raymond at Bill's MacBook Pro. It says root at with this number slash workspaces. We are now in Ubuntu. It's no longer going into my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill the terminal window with the little trash can. And now what I want to do is close the remote connection because right now in Docker, we actually have a running container, which means that's taking up memory on our computer. So when I don't need it, I'm going to close it. There's a number of ways that I can go about doing that. First of all, let me zoom out a little bit here. So I'm back to, there we go. I can either select this little blue line down here and I can locate the close remote connection option. Or I can do my command shift P or control shift P and say, close remote connection. And when I do that, I'm freeing up memory on my computer. I'm actually closing down that folder that we had open. And you'll see over here in just a few moments that this will actually stop running. There we go. You can see it's no longer running this container over here. I freed up memory on our computer. Let me show you what happens when we reopen that folder. So I'm going to go back to the Explorer and choose this open folder option again. I'm going to reopen my My AI Docker image and select the open item again. This time when I open it, you're going to get this notice that says, hey, this is a dev container. Do you want me to open this in a container? And if you do, it'll just go ahead and reopen the folder again, start up our container, and now you can see that over on the right-hand side on the Docker dashboard, the container's running again. Okay, so that's kind of our workflow. Now, can you just open the container directly? Of course you can, but I just wanted to give you a sense for what's going to happen when you open the folder directly on your computer. So what I'm gonna do is do my Command Shift P, close the remote connection, and that will stop over in the Docker dashboard and then we'll go ahead and continue to the next video. If you didn't catch everything that I just showed you and you're still a little bit confused, don't worry, we're gonna be doing these steps a lot and you're gonna to start to get familiar with what's happening. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more like this, please like, comment, and click the bell to support my channel.